le match et décollage. Hello and welcome to our live coverage here at the Guiana Space Centre for the eighth launch this year. And there's our rocket on the pad getting, to, getting ready to carry two Earth observation satellites into space. They are Venus and Obsat 3000. The uh, liftoff is scheduled in about 14 minutes time. You can see the countdown on your screen. To tell us more about them, let's go over to the CEO of Ariane Space, Stefan Israel. Stefan, over to you. Ladies and gentlemen, Ariane Space is delighted to welcome you from the Guyana Space Center for this 10th Vega mission, the second of the year, with our lightweight vehicle. In a few minutes, we are going to launch two Earth observation satellites for our customers and partners. OPSAT 3000 for OHB Italy, on behalf of Telespazio and at the benefit of the Italian Ministry of Defense. Venus for the Israeli Ministry of Science and Technology, on behalf of the Israeli Space Agency, ESA, and the French space agency, CNES. The two satellites have been manufactured by Israeli aircraft industry, IAI. Thanks to all for your trust. As you can see on the control screen behind me, Vega is on the launch pad after the mobile gantry has been removed above, about three hours ago. All the operations with our prime avio linked to the final condon went smoothly. The launcher and the satellites are ready. The weather is green, so we should be in a position to launch in a few minutes at 10.58 p.m. The required performance for this launch is 990 kilograms. Vega will head towards the north to separate Opsat 3000 and Venus on two synchronized orbit, inclined at 97 and 98 degrees with respect to the equatorial plan, with altitudes of 400 and kilo, 450 kilometers and 720 kilometers respectively. OPSAT 3000 will separate first, 42 minutes and 49 seconds after liftoff. Then Venus will separate 55 minutes and 30 second, 32 seconds after at H0 plus one hour and 37 minutes. Our launch is now just a few minutes away. So go Vega, go Opsat 3000 and Venus, and of course, enjoy the show. Thank you. Stefan, thank you very much indeed. And uh, as we heard there, we are flying on board the Vega launcher tonight, the uh, baby of the family and the youngest uh, of the family. There she is on the pad. She is... 30 metres tall, about um, the size of one of the boosters on her big sister Ariane 5, and she weighs in at roughly a third of the Ariane 5 launcher. And if we cut her open at the top, we can see our two satellites in there. Opsat 3000 is in the upper position, and Venus is in the lower position. And as uh, we heard there from Stefan, both of those satellites are going to be on what we call a sun-synchronous orbit, which means they're going to be orbiting north uh, to south around our planet. Now, they are both very high-resolution systems, and uh, the organisation for them has been complex. Let's find out about it. OHB Italy and the Ministry of Science and Technology of Israel are our customers for this dual launch with Vega. Both satellites, OPSAT 3000 and Venus, were manufactured by Israel Aerospace Industries, IAI. For OPSAT 3000, OHB Italy has consistently aimed at making the best use of Vega. 
Rather than a definite target to achieve, the first mission analysis set a range of orbit parameters. The spacecraft qualification approach eliminated unnecessary tests and concentrated on flight worthiness. An interface structure, the LEAR, between the spacecraft and the VESPA supporting structure was designed and qualified by OHB Italy. The result is an optimal hardware configuration in terms of heritage from Israel Aerospace Industry, a satellite manufacturer. With Venus, Israel continues developing its own satellite platform. The IMP bus for improved multi-purpose satellite allows a wide range of space applications in low Earth orbit. After a first successful trial, the Vega launch will mark the second and third launch of this new platform. Introducing a new satellite platform to Vega is always exciting for our in space. Experiencing work with Israel or Space Industries and Rafael, the contractor for propellant activities, constructing different approaches for designing and qualifying the satellite to launch environment in temperature, in vibration, to remove any disagreement or misunderstanding and at last checking the fitness of the different hardware and software parts in Israel, in Europe and in Kourou. The dual launch configuration with OPSAT 3000 and Venus was validated by a set of final mission analysis carried out by ELV and AVIO, the launch vehicle prime, and endorsed by the European Space Agency, the ultimate Vega qualification authority. The conclusion of this work was shared with Telespazio and Italian MOD, stakeholders in the overall OPSAT 3000 system, and for Venus with Israel and French space agencies. The satellites are go for launch. So some really important teamwork there between a range of different agencies and organisations. Congratulations to all those teams for getting us to here today. Uh, they've been working for about uh, seven weeks here on the base to prepare not only the satellites but the launcher. We call it the launch campaign. Let's find out what they've been doing. VV10 is the Vega third dual launch after the second and seventh launches. The two passengers, Optat 3000 and Venus, were built by the same manufacturer, IAI, based in Israel. The satellites arrived in the same Boeing 747 June 21 and transferred in the S1B North and South clean rooms. After the electrical and fluid health checks, followed by the solar array deployment test, Venus was transferred June 29 in the S2B filling hall for the tank fueling with hydrazine. Before fueling, Venus was assembled to the separation system named SIR, a dedicated customer operation. Venus, a mono ergol satellite, was fueled and pressurized July 4 and 5. OPSAT 3000, after health checks identical to Venus, was transferred to S3B July 6 for the fueling with hydrazine with the same fueling car than co-passenger. The July 5 review gave a go for the beginning of combined operations with launcher. On the launcher side, the launch campaign began on a standard 36 days duration with PAT transfer on June 14. Venus, Venus, on its adapter, was integrated on the P2 plate July 6 and mated on the internal Vespa cone the day after. The encapsulation on Vespa upper part was done July 10, ending the Venus integration operations. The assembly of co-passenger OPSAT 3000 on Vespa occurred on July 13. The new generation ferry in July 17 covered Vespa and satellites. This new part, called PAC, was transferred on the launch zone July 19 and integrated the day after on the launcher, ending all satellites' mechanical operations. During the first phases of flight, the solid booster stages P80, Zephyro 23 and Zephyro 9 will be tracked by the telemetric ground station Galio over a duration of 7 minutes. Due to safety aspect, these three stages will re-enter in the seas. The last stage, integrating a liquid engine named AVUM, will reach transfer orbit after first boost duration of six minutes. This boost will be tracked by Bermuda and Canadian Saint-Hubert ground stations. In order to make the first SSO orbit circular, a shorter second boost of two minutes will occur under South Korean Jeju station visibility 
after a long intermediate ballistic phase of 26 minutes. Once the targeted orbit reach, OPSAT 3000 will be released. For the second part of the mission, the upper composite of the carrying structure named VESPA will be separated and a third avum boost will occur under Australian Nunarcia station during one minute in order to start the target 720 km SSO altitude. After one Earth rotation, a fourth avum boost will be foreseen over a duration of one minute and ground tracked by Galio. Venus will be then released after 97 minutes of flight. So there you have it. That's what you can expect to be seeing over the next hour and a half. À tous de DDO, attention pour la séquence finale lanceur. Top H0-4 minutes. There we go. He has announced the beginning of the synchronized sequence, the last four minutes in the final phase of the countdown, as I was saying, that um, I've now popped up to the commentary box, which is in the Mission Control Centre, and I shall be here for the rest of the programme. These are the status panels. I'll translate them for you. Uh, autorisation lancement is the launch authorization. Eta base is the, the base or the range. Logistics. Uh, safeguard is safety. Mesure, measurements. Telemesure is telemetry. Localization is radar. Uh, telecom speaks for itself. Ensemble de lancement is the launch zone. Then we have Vega and the satellites. And Meteo, of course, is weather. So the final countdown started uh, nine hours and ten minutes before launch. 5,040 minutes ago, activation of the telemetry, then an hour later, activation of onboard, the onboard computer, loading of the flight program. The mobile gantry was removed 3,015 before launch, and then 50 minutes before the launcher system was ready, and... Uh, just uh, under eight minutes ago, we got the all clear in terms of the weather. Looking good out there. It's actually been rather sunny these last few days. We are heading towards the dry season now here in French Guiana after having had a long, wet and rainy season. Greetings if you are joining us and an extra special welcome to all the teams at Israel's Ministry of Science and Technology and the Israel Space Agency who are watching the launch from the Israel Aerospace Industry Headquarters in Tel Aviv who designed and built OPSAT 3000 and Venus. And a very big welcome to all you folk watching us in Italy at the Ministry of Defence Telespazio and OHB Italia, and of course to everybody watching us on the internet. This is the Vega launch zone, SLV, site de lancement Vega. Interestingly, it was built on the first Ariane launch pad, Ariane 1. À tous de DDO, attention pour moins une minute. Top H0, moins une minute. We are one minute to launch. Our very best wishes to all the teams, to the OPSAT 3000 and Venus teams, to Arian Space's customers, and the industrial consortia led by Telespazio and Israel's Ministry of Science and Technology. And, of course, to all the teams on the ground waiting to take over the satellites. Let's sit back now and watch the launch. À tous de DDO, attention pour le décompte final. 10. 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top. 
du Malt P80, décollage. La propulsion est nominale. Les paramètres bord sont normaux. Pilotage est calme. What an amazing sight. Les paramètres bord sont normaux. Vega blazing a trail. Across the night skies, here above the Guiana Space Center, heading out north. We can hear the rumble coming across here now at the Space Center. We broke the sound barrier 31 seconds. Acquisition de la télémesure lanceur par la station de Saint-Jean du Maroni. 31 seconds after launch. When we reached Mach 1. Getting some great views tonight. La trajectoire est nominale, le pilotage est calme. He's telling us that everything's going normally. Début de la queue de poussée du P80. We're burning the P80, the first stage. Séparation du P80. And it has burnt all its propellant. Zephyro 23. We don't need any any more. It falls away. We are shedding weight. The lighter we are, the faster we go. And we're now burning the Z23. It's the second stage. It burns for about one minute and 40. And Z stands for Zephyro, which is an Italian type of wind. 23 La trajectoire est nominale. Because it burns 23 tons of solid propellant. Look at the bottom left hand side of the screen, our altitude, we're 100 kilometers above sea level. And that means that we are now basically going into space. We've reached what's called the Kármán line, the border between our atmosphere and outer space, the point where the atmosphere becomes so thin that it can no longer support aeroplanes with wings. And so we have calme, to use rocketry to stay up. It was named after the Hungarian-American aerospace engineer, Theodore von Karman, often known as the father of supersonic flight. Tous les paramètres bord sont nominaux. He was born in 1881 and died in the 1960s, and he was a director of NASA's Jet Propulsion Separation du Zephyro 23. It's okay, we have now lost the Z-23, and we're waiting for the next stage to switch on. That's called the Z-9. Here we go, the scheduled moment for the ignition of that Allumage engine. And then we'll shortly get the separation of the fairing. Engage there it goes. So we don't need the fairing anymore because we are very outside the uh, atmosphere now, which is very thin, so there's no friction. You can see our satellites for the first time. Vega was built by the Italian company Avio. La trajectoire est nominale. We are now close to the 10th launch of Vega, the second of 2017. Vega has set a world record in terms of reliability and orbital injection accuracy, with nine perfect launches in a row from the maiden flight in 2012, exactly five years ago. 
Vega, as operated by Ariane Space, has demonstrated a unique ability to deploy multiple satellites in multiple orbital planes. Today, I'm speaking to you from our plant in Colleferro, where we produce both Vega and we are developing Vega C, which will fly for the first time in 2019. Behind me, you see the new testing facility where we already successfully tested the first booster case of the new P120C solid rocket motor, which will equip both Vega C and Ariane 6. Today, Vega will take two satellites into sun synchronous orbit. OPSAT 3000, an Earth observation satellite for the Italian Ministry of Defense, and Venus, another Earth observation satellite for CNES and ISA, which will control vegetation and environment. The two satellites will be hosted on the Vega secondary payload adapter, VESPA. OPSAP 3000 in the upper position and Venus in the inner one. The Avio team, together with its industrial partners and with Ariana Space and ESA, is pleased to have once more a chance to demonstrate the strength of Europe's space strategy, which hinges around collaboration and teaming. I therefore wish the best success to the 10th mission of Vega. And as we heard there, the two first Vega contracts were signed in June at the Paris Air Show. Airbus Defence and Space's upcoming constellation of observation satellites will fly on the new version of Vega, Vega C, and also Prisma, which is an Earth observation satellite for the Italian Space Agency. So the third stage has now switched off its engine and the main propulsion phase of the flight is now over. Début du boost d'éloignement. Our flight path takes us north up over the Caribbean along the east coast of the and Canada, and uh, we can hear there that we have acquisition of the signal at the Bermuda tracking station. And uh, up over Newfoundland and Labrador and to the west of Greenland over the Baffin Sea, then we cross the Arctic, come back down across Siberia, and then we start Début heading south. Début de la première manoeuvre d'orientation avant le premier boost de la Vouvre getting ready to switch on the Avum upper stage. And then we'll be separating our first satellite over Japan, and then heading south again, back up north towards South America and uh, Ecuador, Colombia, de la where we will switch on our, separate our second satellite. So we have now switched on the Avum upper stage. That's going to burn for about six and a half minutes. And the next next uh, part of the flight has now started because uh, the Avum or Avum upper stage has taken the wheel. Its job is to... Avum est nominal. And everything's going normally. Its job is to deliver the satellites to their drop-off points in space. So the first one to be released is OBSAT 3000. La capacità di vedere, poter guardare dall'alto, è essenziale per moltissime attività, per la difesa in modo particolare. Potendo mettere insieme le capacità di visione radaristica di Cosmo SkyMed, un ottimo prodotto voluto dalla difesa e che la nostra industria ha sviluppato in modo eccellente, con la capacità invece ottica che abbiamo acquisito in un rapporto con Israele di cui siamo molto soddisfatti potendo mettere insieme queste due visioni quindi la visione radaristica e quella ottica per avere uno sguardo sempre più preciso dicevo è un bisogno che ha la difesa ma è ovvio che questa necessità è di molte altre amministrazioni dello Stato o di molti altri enti e ovviamente queste nostre capacità noi le mettiamo a disposizione e quindi un progetto che è nato per la difesa è un progetto oggi profondamente duale che può essere utilizzato da tutti coloro che ne hanno bisogno. Ed è un progetto anche europeo, ne abbiamo giusto parlato anche recentemente con la mia collega francese, ma 
eh, con l'idea di svilupparlo a livello europeo, noi stiamo già collaborando con la Francia proprio per quanto riguarda la capacità ottica, quindi si inserisce in un percorso di costruzione di difesa europea immaginando di mettere insieme queste capacità. Ma oggi permettetemi di ricordare che stiamo parlando anche di eccellenze industriali italiane con Telespazio e con il lanciatore Vega di Avio. Una, un lanciatore eccellente, quasi completamente di tecnologie italiane, sono andato anche a visitare diciamo, dove viene costruito e quindi abbiamo in qualche modo un progetto tutto italiano che verrà lanciato a Kourou, come sapete, ma di cui siamo soddisfatti perché è un progetto a servizio della nostra sicurezza e della nostra comunità. Top right hand side of the screen is our trajectory, the planned path for the vehicle, and the cross is the actual position of the television. We picked up the signal at the Saint Hubert tracking station. That's in Quebec, in Canada, just outside Montreal. Our second satellite to be separated is Venus. We are very proud to be here for the launch of OPSAT 3000. That is a very important milestone for Leonardo and Telespazio. OPSAT 3000 is a space mission of the Italian Ministry of Defense based on a remote sensing satellite equipped with an high resolution optical sensor for defense use. Telespazio is the prime contractor and manages the entire mission, including the procurement of the satellite, the realization of the overall ground segment, and the supply of integrated logistics and operational activities. The OPSAT 3000 system is designed to guarantee very high service performance, combining the high-resolution optical technology on board and the on-ground system's data acquisition and processing capability. The satellite, provided by the Israel Aerospace Industries Company, is designed to have a low weight, high autonomy, remarkable agility, low consumption and high reliability. The launch of OPSA 3000 through a Vega launcher produced by Evio is a great satisfaction for all of us in the Italian space industry, mostly thanks to the support of the Italian Space Agency. OPSAT 3000 will be able to interoperate with the second generation Cosmos SkyMed system to provide to the customer an integrated wide range of products, radar and optical. I would like to take this opportunity to thank the Italian Ministry of Defense for the spirit of the extreme cooperation they have expressed in this project, as well as the industrial team that has delivered its competence and commitments Let me mention in particular the very good relationship of cooperation that has been established with the Israeli colleagues. Cross finger for a successful mission. Indeed. And uh, there we are, being tracked by the Saint Hubert, Saint Hubert tracking station. The Avum upper stage is powering us higher and higher into space. If you look at the bottom left, our altitude. In the middle, our distances from the pad, if you were to draw a straight line along the Earth from the pad to the position underneath the launcher. And on the bottom right is the speed. Extinction de la Voom. So the Avum upper stage has switched its engine off and we are now entering the first ballistic, uh, beginning of an orientation there be uh, for the ballistic phase. Ballistic means without propulsion and that means that we are traveling high enough and fast enough to cruise without the engine. This is the first of two ballistic phases or coast phases during this launch. This one's going to last about uh, 26 minutes. 
Our programme's going to come to you in three parts tonight to cater for those ballistic phases. So he's just announced the beginning of the barbecue rotation, which means that we are now slowly rotating to maintain the temperatures. You can imagine that on one side it can get very hot when you're facing the sun and on the other side very cold. So we have to maintain homogeneity. So our first part was following the launch. Our second part will be focusing on our first passenger to be released, OPSAT 3000. We'll be finding out more about that. And then in part three, we'll be concentrating on our second passenger, Venus. So we're going to take a break and come back to you in about sort of 12 minutes or so. Uh, the commentary will restart at 11.27 p.m. Kuru time. That's uh, Greenwich Mean Time is 2.27. In France and Italy, that's 4.27 and 5.27 a.m. in Israel. We'll leave you with a replay. We are orbiting two satellites tonight for the French, Italians and Israelis. They are OPSAT 3000 and Venus, two Earth observation satellites. OPSAT 3000 for the Italian Ministry of Defence and Venus for the Israel and French space agencies. They lifted off from the pad just under half an hour ago here at the Guiana Space Center on board the smallest launcher of the Ariane space family. In part one, we followed the launch up until the switching off of the Avum upper stage or Avum. It's often pronounced in French. And there you can see what's left of the launcher, the Avum. It's actually rotating. It's in a barbecue phase, rotating as if on a spit in order to keep the temperatures even all the way round. It may look like uh, it's traveling very slowly, but it's not. It's traveling extremely fast. If you look at the bottom of your screen, you can see there on the bottom right hand side that we are traveling at 7.7 .7 kilometers per second. Ladies and gentlemen, per second, not per hour. Teams here in the Mission Control Center, fondly known here as Jupiter, the Jupiter Control Center. We have a number of control centers here in the CSG. The launch control centers are linked to each one of the launch zones, but there's only one Mission Control Center. These are the operational teams behind what we call the fishbowl. The fishbowl is that glass structure there. Top right hand side of the screen, you can see that we, the early stage of the flight, we were really climbing into space. Now we've flattened out. Our First satellite is OPSAT 3000.
OPSA 3000 is a space mission based on a remote sensing satellite equipped with an high-resolution optical camera realized for the Italian Ministry of Defense. The mission was born following an intergovernmental agreement between Italy and Israel. The satellite has low weight and consumption, high autonomy and reliability, and remarkable agility and image quality. The ground segment needed to operate the satellite is fully deployed in Italy and includes two satellite control centers, main and the cap, and a payload programming and processing center. OPSA 3000 will interoperate with the Cosmos SkyMed second generation system to provide the customer with a wide range of optical and radar products in an integrated manner. Telespazio is the prime contractor and manages the entire mission, including the realization of the overall ground segment and the supply of the integrated logistic support and operation services. Telespazio has procured the satellite from Israeli Aerospace Industry, MDB Space Division, together with some parts of the ground segment. The launch services and the satellite interface adapters with VIGA have been in charge to OHB Italia as Telespazio subcontractor. An excellent cooperation has been established with the customer and among all the involved industries, together with the sincere friendships among the various teams. And then I would like to take this opportunity to thank all of them for their outstanding professionality, competences and availability, allowing the achievement of the program objectives. zone of the tracking station in Jeju, which is an island off South Korea. Telespazio is an important Italian company with a huge amount of experience in space systems.
bottom left of the screen, you can see that we've reached our target orbit of 455 kilometers. Uh, we are staying consistent there. We're not climbing anymore. You can see on the top right hand side of the screen, we've plateaued out. Speed is also consistent and we have now switched on the engine for a second time, this is to circularize our orbit. So our orbit was uh, elliptical, which is the shape of an egg or an oval, and now we have to make it into a circle. So we've got to the right altitude, and now we need to circularize. The AVUM is the smart stage. It's the clever part of the launcher. Its job is to deliver the spacecrafts to their specific orbits and it's designed to inject different payloads into different orbits. Its engine can switch on and off up to 20 times and satellites are attached using a special adapter, it's called a VESPA. You can see it there, it's that black structure in the middle, which is hiding Venus underneath. So we've got Opsat at the front, Opsat 3000. You can see the gold structure there on the right-hand side. And we have the second switching off of the AVUM engine. So we're now getting close. Début de la manœuvre d'orientation au profit d'Opsat 3000. To separating Opsat, and he's just told us that we've started the orientation maneuver to get Opsat into exactly the right position to be able to send it off on its journey. We have to orientate it very precisely to set it on the right path. Et la manœuvre d'orientation au profit du satellite. All these maneuvers extremely carefully planned, and we have separation of OPSAT 3000 confirmed there. Huge congratulations to the OPSAT 3000 teams. But of course, we still have Venus attached. And we have the next phase of our journey now to start the process. Take Venus to its orbit and start the process of separating it. So uh, our best wishes to the OPSAT 3000 teams on the ground who are taking over your satellite, flying your new baby. The separation process uses a set of springs which push the satellite away to avoid any collisions. It's all very carefully planned. We now have to start the next phase and climb to 720 kilometers above Earth. In the meantime, though, teams work closely together to develop satellite programs. The activity done in collaboration with Ariane Spass for the launch services of the OPSAT 3000 has been exciting. Starting from the preliminary phases, the compatibility of the satellite with big environment has been tracked to the aim of avoiding any potential trouble during the mission. 
The current launch configuration with OPSA 3000 as main passenger and Venus, a spacecraft made also by IAI and BT as co-passenger, has represented an interesting challenge for both the launcher and the satellite teams. Ariane Spass has supported the OPSAT 3000 program with its own heritage and well-consolidated management approach. The launch campaign has been amazing, providing the customer with the feeling that all the involved aspects have been always predicted and under control. For me personally, being working on a Vega launch vehicle development for about 10 years before jumping at the satellite market, OPSAT 3000 launch is the great conclusion of a wonderful professional experience. Tenth of seconds after the separation from Vega, OPSAT 3000 satellite will start autonomous operations, including the spinning and solar panels deployment, up to the activation of the routine mode state. The satellite keeps itself in this state from the end of the autonomous post-launch phase, except upon failures and malfunction detection, in which case the maintenance mode is autonomously activated. The first contact with OPSA 3000 will be established by the ground control center in IAI MBT at Tel Aviv. Since then, two in-orbit tests, the IoT phases are planned. The first will be in Israel at IAI MBT premises, the second will be in Italy at the final operational centers, Fucino, Vigna di Valle and Pratica di Mare. IEI and Telespazio teams will work jointly during such important activities, with the participation of the Italian MOD personnel. So there you have it. That's what's uh, happening now. And of course, people develop strong bonds on projects like this. So uh, all the teams have worked extremely well together, as we heard there. So you can see over on the right hand side, the picture of the world. And our flight path took us up north from the Guiana Space Centre over the Caribbean, up over Newfoundland. We crossed the Arctic and we came back down across Siberia, started heading south over Japan, where we separated OPSAT 3000. We're now heading south, past the west coast of Australia, and we'll cross the Arctic, the Antarctic rather, and come back up towards South America. And we will be separating our second satellite, Venus, over the northwest, northwestern part of South America. All these operations being tracked by these teams here at the CVI, the Immediate Visual Control, here at the Guiana Space Center. They basically monitor the flight in real time and check that everything is going according to plan. The tracking centers send the data that uh, is being sent down from the launcher. They send it here to these teams and they track all the maneuvers as they happen. They compare the data so that they can build a continual picture of the launcher's behavior. And they then pass that information to the range operations manager, who's here in mission control today. Um, been, it's uh, Antoine Guillaume, who's been making the announcements and keeping us all up to speed with what's happening during the launch. And of course, they can also analyze the data afterwards and check how the launch went. So we are coming up now to our second break because we are in our second ballistic phase, our second coasting phase. We're going to take another break and come back to you 11 minutes past midnight French Guiana time. That's universal time, that's 11 minutes past three in the morning. In Italy and France, that's 11 minutes past five. And of course, in Israel, for you early birds, it's 11 minutes past six in the morning. And I hope you have your cups of coffee to hand. We'll leave you with a replay and come back to you shortly. Mal P90. 
phénoménal. Le pilotage est calme. Hello again, and welcome back to our program. Shalom to all of you from Israel. After years of development of hard work of our finest engineers, technicians, and other team members, we have reached this date, the launch day of the Venus satellite. Israel is a state with great beauty, great people, and the state of science, technology, and innovation. It is my duty as the Minister of Science and Technology to continue to advance the fields in which Israel excels and which ensure its future. Space is definitely one of them. This year we had already launched three nanosatellites into space. One of them, Duhifat, was built and is operated by high school students from all over Israel from Jewish cities, Arab towns, and Orthodox communities. This project proves that science truly can build bridges over cultural barriers. The Venus project is a joint effort between the Israeli Space Agency and France's Space Agency, CNES, and it is a prime example of our close cooperation with the French government and the French people. I believe that Venus will have a positive impact not only on research, but on the environment itself. Personally, I am looking forward to see the first multispectral images of the Israeli Negev, where Venus can assist in development of better agricultural planning. I hope that with images from Venus, our scientists will learn more about water and soil pollutions, and will be able to develop better monitoring and solutions. Finally, I want to thank all the teams that worked on the Venus project and its launch into orbit. The IAI, ELOP, Rafael, the team of ISA within the Israeli Ministry of Science and Technology, CNES, and the Ariane Viga launcher team in Kourou. Good luck to you all. Good luck to Venus. Warm greetings from Israel. And the Israeli Defense Minister there telling us about our second satellite to be released, Venus, as we enter the third part of our program. Traveling on board the Vega launcher and joining me now in the commentary box to tell us more about Vega is Ariane Space's Marino Franito. Marino is the Vice President of the Vega Business Unit. Uh, Marino, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Uh, Marina, you have been in the job now for a year and a half. Vega's been on the road, as it were, since 2012. How's it been going for Vega? This was the first launch. So... Uh, we Spencer couldn't hear you there, I'm yeah. afraid. So let's start that one again, Marino, because I realised that Marino's microphone wasn't on. Uh, we, you were just uh, telling us about how things have gone. You've been here uh, for a year and a half. How things were going for Vega? So I have to say things are going very well. Um, Ariane Espas has taken over responsibility for launching Vega with uh, VB07. So it was the seventh Vega launch. This happened in September 2016. And since then, we have already performed four Vega launches in less than uh, 11 months. So this makes a launch rate of more than four in a year. 
What does it mean? It means that Darian Spass has done a very great job at uh, marketing Vega and at uh, operating Vega from this uh, Kuru launch site. Um, and Vega is, is ramping up well. It's ramping up really well, isn't it? What does that mean for costs in terms of that ramp up? But of course, this is a virtuous circle that we are trying to to create because we uh, we have reduced costs since the introduction of Vega, the first launch in 2012, and this has allowed to increase launch rate to to the rate we have today. And of course, launching more means that we can reduce costs even further, and so this will be for the benefit of Vega. Exploitation. It, it's an interesting launcher, isn't it? Because it's a real team effort between a range of organisations. Yes, I think that uh, this is this is really the example of a great success of international cooperation, as we have seen uh, tonight. We have seen cooperation between Italy and Israel, Israel and France. And I have to say that uh, we have a great cooperation between Italy and France on the Vega program. This is a really great success because people work together every day, uh, French people, Italian people, and uh, we have built really a great team. Um, just very briefly, we're going to go to a film in a second. What does the future hold? We'll talk more about Vegas C later. But in yeah, the future is... Uh, is holding very, very good things. I think for Vega, we can talk later. Let's, about yeah, it. let's 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 uh, let's take a, a look now um, at our satellite uh, Venus. Israel Aerospace Industries built both satellites. The Venus and Opsat 3000 satellites were designed and manufactured by Israel Aerospace Industries (IAI). These two satellites represent two vastly different applications of the Earth imaging satellite capabilities which exist at IAI. On the one hand, we have the OPSAT 3000 satellite for the Italian Ministry of Defense. OPSAT 3000 is an example of the third generation of reconnaissance satellites developed by IAI. The purpose of the satellite is to provide a high resolution national intelligence collection capability to the Italian Ministry of Defense. On the other end of the imaging satellite spectrum, we have the Venus satellite, which is a flagship cooperation project between the Israel Space Agency and CNES. The purpose of the system is to provide vegetation and environmental monitoring of fixed sites of interest to an international group of scientific researchers. To this end, the satellite is equipped with a 5.3 meter resolution super spectral imaging payload operating in 12 spectral bands which have been optimized for collection of the required scientific data. The orbit has been designed to provide a repeating two-day visit of about 130 sites of interest to the researchers. Images will be downloaded and distributed from a ground station in Toulouse. Another distinguishing feature of Venus is that it also includes a technological mission to prove and test an electrical propulsion system based on Hall effect thrusters powered by xenon gas. This propulsion system was developed by Rafael in Israel. The system will be employed to lower the initial 720 km orbit to a 410 km altitude and maintain it there using a closed loop orbit control system. These two systems both involve very close international cooperation between Israel and France for the Venus program and Israel together with Italy for OTSAT 3000. I would like to take this opportunity to express our thanks, appreciation and good wishes to all the Italian, French and Israeli government and industrial entities involved in these two ventures. Thank you. Venus might sound like a science mission to investigate the solar system, but it actually stands for vegetation and environment monitoring on a new microsatellite. So that gives you an idea of what the science is all about. It's the first joint Earth observation program between the Israel Space Agency and the French Space Agency, CNES, as we heard. And the Israelis are responsible for the satellite and ground control centre.
Take a look at our altitude. We have climbed to 715 kilometers above us. You can see there in the trajectory on the top right hand side, we're getting close now to our separation altitude. Venus has some innovative technologies on board to help us better understand our planet. Venus is not like any other satellite. For the first time, several regions of the world will be observed every two days for a period of over two years with a ground resolution of five meters. Venus will monitor changes in natural phenomena such as plant growth or variations in snow cover. The Venus satellite demonstrates new services made possible due to the frequent taking of high spatial resolution images in identical site conditions. Venus's first mission is to provide scientists with the means to understand how vegetation responds to climate and human activities. Other applications are also being studied. Until now, a high-resolution Earth observation satellite in heliosynchronous orbit has observed previously defined zones every 10 to 15 days. Cloud cover and the presence of aerosols often limits production to just one image per month. At this frequency, it is not possible to monitor a number of processes such as plant growth. This makes Venus an innovative satellite. It will observe around 100 sites with a revisit frequency of two days. This revisit frequency, which will be maintained for two and a half years, is exceptional for a high-resolution satellite and is a world first. Due to these performances, a high-resolution multispectral image will be produced every 10 days, from which clouds and aerosols will be eliminated. For today's scientists, this opens up a whole new field of applications on the condition of the Earth's ecosystems. For example, it will be possible to dynamically monitor the ground coverage and cycles of vegetation, detect plant stress and water requirements, estimate yields, map forest fires and bushfires, map the transport of sediment to rivers and estuaries, and monitor the movement of glaciers and the breaking up of Siberian rivers. How is Venus able to provide cloud-free images? Over the two days separating two consecutive observations of the same site, the cloud coverage and presence of aerosols can change considerably while the vegetation changes very little. The observation angle, observation time and lighting conditions remain constant for a given site. By superimposing images obtained from the stereoscopic shots and using complex algorithms, the CNES and CESPIO engineers can accurately determine the presence or non-presence of clouds and aerosols and can move away from them after corrections. To do this, the satellite is fitted with a camera equipped with 12 spectral bands ranging from blue to near infrared. The spectral bands were chosen to characterize the condition of the vegetation, to estimate more easily the optical thickness of the aerosols and the amount of water vapor in the atmosphere. This makes it possible to accurately correct radiation diffused and absorbed by the atmosphere. Each scientist can therefore choose the range of spectral bands best suited to his or her research field. This innovative scientific mission announces the future of European Earth observation satellites and new methods of exploiting data over the coming years. Venus va permettre, grâce à un instrument totalement nouveau et une mission avec une programmation très novatrice, d'observer la végétation et de façon répétitive, ce qui est quelque chose qui jusqu'à ce jour n'a pas été fait. Et donc cela va nous permettre, sur un certain nombre de zones choisies de la planète, de voir comment le climat fait évoluer la végétation. 
Israël est souvent présenté comme la start-up nation ou le pays des hautes technologies de l'innovation et à ce titre bien sûr le spatial est tout à fait impacté par cette culture de l'innovation qui existe en Israël. L'agence spatiale israélienne, Israël Aircraft Industry développe de nombreux satellites tous plus innovants les uns que les autres et pour le CNES bien sûr qui cultive aussi l'innovation comme un peu son ADN et bien travailler avec Israël était tout à fait naturel. Nous avons de nombreuses coopérations, mais celle-ci a conduit pour la première fois à développer un satellite en commun. Il y en aura d'autres, nous préparons déjà l'avenir, mais donc déjà Vénus est le parfait exemple de la coopération entre Israël et la France. So some really vital and important work there, scientific work uh, for Venus. And of course, this kind of data is vital for giving scientists the consistent and irrefutable information they need to help them build an accurate picture and improve our understanding of Earth. It is, after all, our home and we don't have another option. The Israel Space Agency is working on many advanced and exciting technologies. Let's find out more about them. Israel, as one of the smallest countries on Earth, is barely visible from space. And yet, the Israeli Space Agency's innovative and groundbreaking technologies have led the way to outstanding achievements in the field of space exploration. Israel is among the few countries in the world which develop, build, launch, and operate satellites in space. Geographical and safety constraints have forced Israel to launch satellites in an opposed trajectory to what is customary in the world, which drove the scientific community in Israel to be creative and excel in order to achieve high required performance for small satellites. The Israeli space industry has recorded many achievements, such as the development of communication and Earth observation capabilities high-resolution electro-optical satellites and advanced synthetic aperture radars, which can also be used at night and under all weather conditions. The Venus satellite, a joint effort with the French Space Agency, is a micro-satellite with electric propulsion, offering super-spectral remote sensing capabilities of the Earth, utilizing 12 different spectral bands, and thereby enabling environmental monitoring as well as assisting in precision agriculture. The next generation of satellites will offer hyperspectral remote sensing using 240 different spectral bands covering the full spectrum from visible light all the way up to 2.4 microns. This will allow for molecular level monitoring of vegetation, environmental pollutants in bodies of water and on land, and the monitoring of quarried substances. The Technion, Israel's Institute of Technology, is currently working on the first of its kind experiment in which it intends to design, launch and prove flight capability of three formation nanosatellites. This nanosatellite will enable, among other things, the locating and identifying of people at risk. Israel's ground mobile broadband services, based on satellite communication systems, have already saved many lives around the world during natural disasters and will be visually enhanced as part of a collaboration with the UN Spider Initiative. Israeli space technology and contributions can even be found as far as Mars, as part of the Curiosity Project, where a unique sensor cooling system developed in Israel has been successfully integrated. Israel believes its most important resource is its human resource. As part of the startup nation, Israeli children grow up in a highly creative environment. From an early age, they're encouraged to dream and are supported in developing all the necessary intellectual tools to make those dreams come true. Not just through classroom work, but through hands-on experiences. Many children dream of becoming astronauts, like Ilan Ramon, an Israeli astronaut on board the Columbia Space Shuttle. 
Some young entrepreneurs are part of the core team of Space IL that's currently competing for Google's Lunar X Prize. University graduation percentage rates in Israel are among the highest in the world. Israeli academic institutes continue to push the envelope and develop futuristic technologies such as quantum computing, developments which will lead to significant scientific breakthroughs in the decades to come. Eight Nobel Prizes were won by Israeli scientists thus far. As a small country, Israel is gearing its space industry towards large-scale collaborations. Many of Israel's technological advancements are meant to integrate with multinational projects for various organizations and communities. The Israeli Space Agency and industry will continue to welcome international collaborations that will help work towards a prosperous future for humankind. Towards an era with no limits, where micro turns to macro and nano to astro. So back to today's mission and the Avum upper stage is getting ready to switch its engine back on again in less than a minute. This is Vega's seventh launch for Earth observation satellites, seven out of its ten. Um, Marino is uh, with me in the commentary box again. Marino, Vega's pretty well suited, isn't it, to this kind of mission? Yes, absolutely. Um, the, the point is that Earth observation bord sont missions are more and more based on, um, on small satellite platforms and, uh, of course, low orbits. So this is why Vega is the perfect match for, for this kind of missions. And um, this, this is really a market trend that we see that uh, Earth observation missions are more and more based on smaller platforms. Uh, there was a motto already from, from, from some years saying small... Allumage de la boom. And this is this is really what uh, what we are seeing now. So and and today, mission is a clear example of that. It's the best example we can have. Yeah, it, it absolutely is. Uh, and right now, all going according to plan. The Avum upper stage has switched its engine back on again, bang on time, um, and we are getting closer now to the next phase of the flight. Um, Marino. We were talking earlier about the future, and we're hearing there that the everything's going according to plan. Marina, let's talk about Vega C and the future. Yeah, so we have already said uh, during previous Vega launches, we are we are building the future with Vega C, which will bring more capacity, more performance at uh, an affordable price, which is. Quatrième extinction de la boom. We'll just let everybody know there that the upper stage has switched its engine off again. We're getting Début close de la now. manoeuvre d'orientation au profit de la charge utile Venus. The upper stage is doing its orientation maneuvers. We are on orbit down there, altitude 727. Speed on the bottom right, 758. You'll notice that our distance from the pad has reduced because, of course, we are uh, closer to it now. Separation du satellite Venus. Uh, we have separation. We have confirmation there of separation of the Venus satellite. Uh, congratulations to everybody. Congratulations to the Israel and French space agencies, to all the teams involved in this uh, super project. And very best wishes now to everyone taking over flying the satellite. You can see it moving away there. Marino, a final word from you before uh, you head downstairs to join your colleagues. Well, we, we are very happy to to deliver and to have delivered again with this mission. And uh, I hope now, and I am waiting for, for, for the confirmation that, uh, that the satellites are healthy in orbit 
this is the most important thing for tonight. Absolutely. We're waiting now for the acquisition of Signal. Marino, um, I'm going to let you go downstairs, join your colleagues, your customers, um, as we wait for that acquisition and for the official speeches. Thank you, Cathy. Thank you Bye. very much, Marino. So... This was one hour and 40 minutes ago, roughly. We lifted off from the pad here at the Guiana Space Center into the night sky. The 10th Vega to launch from the Space Center. 10 out of 10 successful launches. We were exceedingly lucky. We got some great shots with our cameras, able to see it for about two minutes, actually, nearly two minutes, which uh, was super. And of course, Vega still has a job to do. It's called passivation. Its job isn't finished yet. So you can tell there we've picked up the signal in Bermuda because we are still tracking the launcher. We have to put it into its graveyard orbit. So we have uh, happy faces there. As we said, we've got the uh, acquisition of Signal, I believe, from everybody's faces. But 10 out of 10 for Vega. Let's take a look back now at the 10 missions since 2012. A night to remember indeed for all these teams. 
Ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, Ariane Space is delighted to confirm that OPSAT 3000 and Venus have been safely separated on their targeted sun-synchronous orbits. For the second time this year, and the 10th since its debut, success is here for Vega and its customers. Well done. Tonight's Vega flights serve two major Earth observation programs for our customers and partners. The first passenger, OPSAT 3000, is the fourth satellite launched by Ariane Space for the Italian Ministry of Defense. I would like to express my profound gratitude to General Vecchiarelli, who honors us with his presence tonight. We are very proud to have delivered one more time for Italy with our most Italian launcher, Vega. I would like also to extend my gratitude to OHB Italia, our prime contractor for the launch of OPSAT 3000, on behalf of Telespazio, which is responsible for the entire system. The second passenger, Venus, dedicated to vegetation monitoring, has been developed by the Israeli Space Agency, which is sponsored by the country's Ministry of Science and Technology, our prime contractor for this flight, as well as by CNES. Equipped with state-of-the-art tools for observing climate change, Venus will contribute to the European flagship program, Copernicus. I would like to pay my tribute to ESA director, Mr. Avi Blasberger, as well as the president of CNES, Mr. Jean-Yves Le Gall, who have been attending this launch with us. Let me also highlight the presence of the director general of the Ministry of Science and Technology, Mr. Peretz Vassan, as well as Israeli ambassador in France, Madame Alicia Bin Noun. Last but not least, congratulations to Israeli to Israel Aerospace Industries, IAI, who manufactured both satellites on this flight. OPSAT 3000 and Venus are the third and fourth IAI satellites orbited by Ariane Space since 1996. We hope we can size more opportunities in the future. We have with us President and CEO of IAI, Joseph Weiss, and thank you very much for being with us in crew tonight. 10 over 10. With tonight's flight, this score corresponds to the outstanding operational performance of Vega since its introduction at the CIG in 2012. In five years of activity, our lightweight vehicle already orbited a total of 25 satellites for 19 customers worldwide, both institutional and commercial, serving a wide range of space applications, such as Earth observation, science, technology, and education. So I would like to congratulate all our partners for the, this success, starting for sure with Avio, Vega prime contractor with whom we have been running the first launch campaign under a new operational organization, the famous H0, for even more, competi for even more competitiveness. Complimented to all teams in Colefero. Let me give my warmest wishes to have your CEO, Giulio Renzo, who accompanies us tonight. Ariane Space and Avio are partners for the success of Vega. We are now working hard to prepare Vega C, which maiden flight is scheduled for 2019 and which has already been awarded two contracts. Our next challenge with Giulio Renzo is to celebrate together Vega's 100th success from the CAG. So if we are at red four, it should be in 25 years, and uh, we can diminish this period if we reach red five. Congratulations also to the European Space Agency and national agencies with ASI as a leader for your continuous support to the Vega program. We have with us uh, Stefano Bianchi for, uh, uh, for ISA and for sure Roberto Battiston, president of ASI, and thank you very much for your support. I would like to thank our partner CNES, uh, with whom we are working on a daily basis in CSG, as well as our contractors in French Guiana and all employees at the launch facility. And for sure, I would like to mention all uh, the Ariane Space colleagues who are contributors of the success, Marino Franito, who is our Vega program di director, and all our partners uh, and teams in Ariane Space for this new success. This is the 260. 65th launch of our space vehicle family from the CIG. So I would like now to welcome to the stage our customers and partners. 
Thank you very much. Good evening, or better, good night is better. <laughs> Great night tonight. Let me introduce myself. My name is Lorenzo Donghe from Telespazio. And uh, let me express uh, a real uh, satisfaction, happiness to be here because I've been following this program uh, since its birth in 2012. Uh, the OPSA 3000, uh, a very important project for Telespazio, is devoted to the Earth Observation for the Italian Minister of Defense. The system is made up of a high-resolution optical satellite and a ground segment for in-orbit control, uh, mission planning, and uh, acquisition and the processing of the images. The system is supplied by Telespazio. Uh, let me remind you, Telespazio is a joint venture between uh, two uh, companies, Leonardo and Thales. Leonardo is an Italian company that owns 67% of the joint, and Thales uh, is a French company that owns 33% uh, of the joint venture. Telespazio is responsible for the supply of the entire system, from the satellite to the ground system, launch services, early operation services, and logistics. And this program, uh, represents a successful, a valuable, and fruitful cooperation with the Italian Ministry of Defense, confirmed by a long-term cooperation already carried out on other projects, like such as uh, the CICRA, Constellation CICRA for military communication and the Constellation Cosmo SkyMed for Earth observation based on radar technology. The satellite has been launched by Ariane Space with Vega Carrier, the excellent launcher uh, pro produced by another Italian company, Avio. And all these represent a successful demonstration of the uh, capabilities of the, industri of the Italian industry in the space sector, strongly supported by Italian Space Agency. The satellite was built by Israeli aerospace industry, chosen on, uh, uh, by the Italian Ministry of Defense on internal uh, intergovernmental uh, agreements, uh, Italian-Israeli. And uh, this program confirms the solidity of friendship between these two countries, Italy and Israel, that has been working in the field of defense for a long time. The OPSA 3000 will jointly operate with the new constellation Cosmos Chimed second generation that will allow the Italian Ministry of Defense to have access to the most advanced technology thanks to the integration with radar and optical data generated by these two systems, achieving a very high accurate observation capability. Finally, I would like to highlight the good cooperation with the Israeli colleagues with their significant contribution to the success of the mission. And uh, let me thank again the Italian Minister of Defense for the great cooperation, reliable cooperation on this project, as well as the industrial team that has given a clear proof of its competence and ability. Thanks and good luck to all of you. My dear friends, 
We spent uh, some very nice hour together, pleasant hour, touching by hands the superb capability of a great team, which uh, I would like to congratulate on behalf of the Ministry of the Italian uh, Defence. Today we did another step forward in the European cooperation in space, something we really need. We really need because we live in a time very critical under the security and stability environment, and there is a lack of the situational awareness. So, uh, as a customer, I like uh, to thank very much the European Space Agency, the Italian Space Agency, the CNES, the Ariane Space, Havio, Telespazio, and the Israeli Aerospace uh, industry as well, for uh, letting me have uh, a powerful system that will complement uh, the other we have in a time that uh, situation awareness uh, is really uh, critical. So uh, today we set also uh, the pace for a better cooperation in uh, defense, and that's something we really need uh, right now, and I hope that uh, the other partner, the other allies, the other friendly nation, we look uh, to all of you with uh, a lot of regards and uh, looking, uh, uh, looking forward for uh, some more co cooperation in uh, defense as well. Thank you very much for what you have done for the Italian Minister of Defense. Good night to everybody. I think this is uh, the best conclusion of a very great experience. So from my side, on behalf of uh, which be Italy, I want just now to congratulate and to thank all the involved parties, starting from our industrial partners, Telespazio, the prime contractor, and IIMBT, the satellite manufacturer, because with them we were uh, jointly working uh, together till the beginning of this project uh, and we solved uh, together all the critical phases that we encountered. I have obviously to thank a lot Ariane Spass and its partners, CNES, for uh, the great job they did uh, before and during this launch campaign, which I assure to you has been managed in such a way that we were in a comfortable situation till the beginning uh, up to the end. Uh, finally, obviously, I have to thank the launcher industrial team, ELV and Davio, because I think they demonstrated with this uh, VV10 flight the validity of, of the Vega project with uh, another big success. And the last, uh, thank to our end user, the Italian Ministry of Defense, which has been uh, following and supporting uh, the industry involved uh, into OPSA 3000 project in the beginning, uh, for sure beyond the nominal. So now just, we have just to be waiting uh, for the first image downloading uh, from space and uh, to start uh, the important phase of the mission. Thank you. Good night, Mr. Gianni Legal, President of CNES, uh, Her Excellency Mrs. Alisa Benun, uh, Ambassador of Israel in France, Mr. Roberto Batiston, President of uh, ASI, Mr. Stefan Israel, President of uh, Arian Space, Mr. Stefano Bianchi, Representative of uh, ISA, and uh, Mr. Joseph uh, Weiss, President and uh, CEO of Israel Aerospace Industries. Distinguished guests and uh, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen, what a spectacular event, a launch of a rocket into space. As you can imagine, it is the first satellite launch I ever attended, so I will most uh, definitely remember it for a long time. It is a great honor to attend this event tonight to celebrate the successful launch of Venus. This is the first scientific government-founded satellite in Israel. 
no doubt, an achievement for itself. It is the smallest research satellite of its type in the world and the fruitful result of the great cooperation between ISA and CNES. Israel, as you might have heard, is well known for its engineers and scientists. Our high-tech industry is the most successful segment of the economy. And the space industry, though modest in size, is full of great talent, innovation, and inspiration. The goal of the Ministry of Science and Technology and myself as Director General is to make sure that uh, all of this continue to thrive in Israel. With a record high budget under the leadership of uh, Minister Akunis, we are now preparing for the upcoming challenges for the Israeli space industry. Our investment in space will continue to grow next year. I want to see more launches and more Israeli achievements in space. As for a Venus today, we have reached one of the peaks of this great environmental project. The journey of Venus into orbit began with the vision of a handful of people in 2005. This journey had created a very close connection between the partners in the space agency. The project managers, the industry professional, and academia members learned to bridge over cultural barriers and language gaps. Many of them here with us tonight. Your hard work showed that innovation is universal. This close relation have already led to new project, and I am sure that it will lead to an additional mission as well. Today is the opportunity to thank you all for the passion, determination, goodwill, and faith, and above all, the sense of mutual trust and partnership that can serve as an ex excellent example for further cooperation initiatives by the global space community. I am confident that during the mission in orbit, Venus will send a large member of multispectral images, which uh, shall help us develop precision agriculture, better water resources, and forest monitoring and support for their environmental task. I would like to thank all the teams that have worked on the Venus project and its launch to orbit, the teams of IAI, ELOP, and Rafael, the teams of ISA, headed by uh, Director Mr. Avi Blasberger, as well as his predecessors, the team of CNES, headed by its president, Mr. John Yves Legal, and his predecessor, and the Rian Vega launcher team in Kuru. Thank you all, and a very good luck to Venus. And Ibu, I want to say, Mazal Tov, Be'atzlacha, V'toda Raba Lekulam. Thank you. Chers amis, dear friends, Kari Amici, Haverim Yekarim, what an event. How dreams come true. As a person that took part in the Venus program in different positions from its very beginning, from the vision of small satellite with super spectral payload for environment and agriculture monitoring, through the composing of the cooperation agreement, the contract signature, and finally, in my current position, accepting the, sign, the satellite and joining the, lo the launch uh, what a circle closure. I am sure that as we dreamt, the outcome of this satellite will be extremely beneficial for the environment preservation, agriculture development, and last but not least, for the development of the use of electrical propulsion in low Earth orbit. My dear friends, since I, since I believe that all is about people, 
Without the close cooperation with CNES, headed by our close friend Jean-Yves Legal and our colleague in all levels, we wouldn't overcome all the obstacles and reach this moment. I'm very glad that this good uh, friendship proved itself in the current program, and I'm sure that it will be in the future. To our Italian uh, friends, I'm sure that our good friendship will flourish as well. This is the time to express our uh, gratefulness and appreciation to the teams that tirelessly work on the project. The people of CNES, headed by Pierrick, ISA people headed by Avia, the industries, IAI, the satellite manufacturer and integrator, LB Telop, the payload manufacturer, Rafael, the electrical propulsion system manufacturer, and last but not least, Ariane Spass team for the successful launch. Now, when the first part is behind us, I wish uh, that the satellite will operate as expected for the benefit of the environment science. Bon chance and bad slacha. Good evening. After two Israelis, what can I say? Actually, it's a great night for AI, great night for everybody, I think. It's uh, the 18 and 19 satellite made by AI launched to space, a small country, but high technology. So we are very proud of it. Actually, I was wondering whether I have to, to say here's two switches because of two satellites, but I'll save it from you. In any case, I would like firstly to to congratulate Ariane Spout for a very, very well, good job done. As you said, Stefan, it's a third and fourth satellite launched by Ariane for IEI for Israel, so it's a great appreciation for our company from Israel. As to our customers <clears throat> and partners at the Israel Space Agency, CNES, Telespazio, and the Italian Space Agency and the Italian Ministry of Defense, I said that we are just at the beginning of our mission. Everybody here is applauding, applauding, everybody is smiling. I'm the only one staying here still worried. We are waiting tomorrow, three hours from now, to get first connection to uh, initially for the Italian MOD, satellite up to 3,000, 10, 10, 15, Israeli time, and 15 minutes later to get the connection from Venus. And from then on, we'll know the satellites are healthy, connection there. Solar panels are open, antennas are open, and we can talk to the satellites. Later on, within three, four days, we'll start to get first images from orbit. Personally, for me, it's closing the loop. I was part of initiating the two programs, so I was part of negotiating the two programs, I was part of signing the contract, and I was escorting them, so the event tonight is quite astonishing for me, myself. The Optal 3000 satellite IoT will commence in Israel, and within a few weeks, the, I, <clears throat> the entire operation will be switched over to the Italy team that was already partnered with our team, learn what to do, and I'm sure we'll do it on the best side. So far, it has been a long, challenging, very yet fruitful journey, combining vision of international cooperation and advanced technologies into an important scientific mission for Venus, a national air observation center for the Italian Ministry of Defense. Without the good and strong base of uh, intimate relation be, uh, between France and Israel and Italy and Israel, these events probably will not happen today. Many of you today have, as I have said before, been involved in Venus from its birth and I, as an idea during its get interesting evolution into a full national program working together to overcome both the technological and the programmatic challenges. Ven Venus, as the first scientific satellite built in Israel and the first long-term international program in space from Israel, served for many years as the cornerstone of Israel's space agency program. The success of Venus highlights the importance of such a program. With regard to OPSAT program, we are confident that the Italian MOD, our close ally, <coughs> At the fin as the final user of the system will derive the expected operational benefits that the system is capable of delivering. You now have in your possession a powerful space-based tool for intelligence and collection for intelli intelligence collection for your critical national requirement and situational awareness. I want to thank our colleagues, 
partner subcontractor in Israel, Elbit for the two cameras, Rafael for the propulsion systems that were based for the scientific and the technological mission of Venus program. Coming to the end, I want to talk about some personal issue. Jean-Yves, my friend, we know each other for 15 years, about. We have some tough times at the beginning, changing launcher in five months before the launch from one launcher to the other. But from then on, we have a very good relation. And today, you made my day by taking us, me and the distinguished ambassador, to the Devil Island. Uh, for who you who don't know, Devil Island was a place where a um, captain or whatever his rank was, Dreyfus, a Jewish officer in the French army uh, at the 90s, in the 90s of the 18th century. For all kinds of reasons, he was sentenced and was exiled here to the, um, to the Devil Island, stayed here for four years. And after four years, the French government has made, uh, I think, a repeat, uh, judge, ju repeat uh, court hearing and then let him free. And he even was fighter, fought in the First World War II. But nobody, not everybody knows about the connection between Dreyfus and the even existence of the State of Israel. At that time, there was a guy, a journalist, born in Vienna, Austrian guy, Jewish guy, by the name of Theodor Herzl. He was sent by his newspaper to simply be in Paris and look for the, for the Dreyfus sentence, the Dreyfus judgment. That all the process before in the middle, and after that brought him to the conclusion that by the end of the day, the Jewish people has to have their own land. This is a simple fact. Uh, he was the one that established the Zionism. He was the one that today is called the uh, vision of the state of Israel, and all the rest is piece of history. So thank you very much for a very good job, well done, and wish us all the best for tomorrow and the first pictures. Thank you very much. Dear friend, Mrs. Ambassador, it is a really great night. Uh, what an experience to be here tonight to see the achievements which are possible through collaboration. It is a night where we can be proud to be European and to be proud to be Italian for the amount of uh, achievement that uh, we have uh, assisted uh, both from the launch of Vega, the 10th launch, the 10th successful launch. It's in, uh, really uh, uh, probably the first uh, launcher which has achieved 10 successful launches since the very beginning uh, in only five years. Really amazing. And uh, the, f the last four within a year. So Cadence 4 has been already achieved, as a matter of fact. But, uh, we have uh, assisted uh, to launch uh, two very important satellites, which uh, have many, many implications. This is a really a feast of international collaboration. The implication for uh, Italian MOD, which is uh, going to have uh, state-of-the-art capability in the optical, which is joined to the capability in the SAR, which will allow a very powerful intelligence and uh, monitoring uh, from, from space. Uh, and uh, as has been announced by the Minister of Defense, uh, Mrs. Pinotti, during this night uh, interview, uh, to make it also available to international collaboration, also in the field of defense, which is something which is very timely from the European point of view. So there is a lot of, of uh, reasons for that. And uh, of course, uh, the Venus satellite is also full of importance for uh, the French-Israeli collaboration, but also carry a very important information about the observation of the Earth with more powerful tools in order to give uh, uh, the scientists uh, and Europe uh, and the world uh, more precise uh, information to understand and 
help reducing the effect uh, on the climate uh, by human intervention. Uh, those two satellites, uh, which are based uh, on the outstanding technology of the Israeli industry, uh, are uh, not only successful tonight, but are also the basis for future collaboration in the field of Earth observation. Uh, we are working together with Israeli to make it happen, uh, to make a reality, the next generation of hyperspectral satellite, the Shalom project. Uh, and so this, which are tonight uh, participating to is just one step of a much longer journey. And I would like to close my little contribution to this night. It is a very exceptional, unique uh, event by thanking the many which have made this possible. This is a long list, I cannot make it complete, but clearly I would like to thank CNES for the hosting in this unique facility, which is the European Spaceport, which will give Europe the capability of launching the launcher from, which has been designed and built within the ESA. Uh, our capability is through the collaboration which has made it possible this international organization. And uh, in, in thanking all the industries, uh, in Italy in particular, which have been participating uh, to this uh, extraordinary event, uh, I would also like to thank uh, ISA for this ongoing collaboration, this strong friendship, uh, and looking forward for more successes. Thank you to everybody. Madame l'ambassadrice, euh, chers amis de Ambassador, de France from Toulouse, Tel Aviv and elsewhere, I will be short. Everything has been said. I will try and say a few things, three points. The tenth launch of Vega, I was here for the first one a few years ago, five years ago. And when you see uh, the uh, road that we have gone, uh, it's extraordinary. So I would like to congratulate both those behind the success, ESA, ESA, ELV, uh, Ariane Space and all of the uh, space uh, industry. Um, I would like to say a few words for the CNES teams. Uh, this uh, launch uh, uh, tonight had four centers uh, associated with CHG, the head of uh, launchers, uh, the uh, Toulouse Center for Venus, and the um, uh, headquarters for cooperation with Israel. Uh, about international cooperation also, I'd like to say a few words. Uh, you know this is dear to my heart. And I would like to say, dear Ambassador, the head of Monson, um, the head of ESA, the president of IAI, how proud we are of this partnership with all of you. The State of Israel is a great space nation, and you have once more confirmed this with the orbiting of these two satellites, Offsat 3000 for the Italian uh, defense, uh, and I would like to congratulate their representative here tonight. It's a beautiful satellite. I saw the presentation this morning with great interest and Venus, of course, which we designed and uh, developed together, which will play a major role in uh, the fight against climate change. Uh, you know, it is a great challenge for France and for our um, President of the Republic, whom I would like to quote him. Thanks to Venus, we will make a better planet again. Thank you. A few words of conclusion, very briefly in French, to say that we will be back at the uh, Guernes Space Center in the first days of September to launch to France of Air and Space uh, until SAT uh, for the upper position with Arian 530E. Uh, and the uh, Japanese operator, EPSAT, it will be the PSAT Quantra uh, satellite as part of a contract signed with another friend of Arian Space, which is the satellite manufacturer, SSL Lawrence. So I wish you a very good evening and enjoy this success. And that brings the official speeches to their conclusion. So it's mission accomplished once again for the light lifter of the Ariane space family, Vega.
Opsat 3000 and Venus are on their way. Our very best wishes to the teams on the ground in Italy, France and Israel for the next phase of their operations. Good luck, everybody, for the LEOPS and commissioning phase. And congratulations to the Israel and French space agencies, to Israel's Ministry of Science and Technology, to Telespazio, to Israel Aerospace Industry, to the Italian Ministry of Defence, and, of course, to OHB Italia. And, of course... Thanks to Ariane Space for the launch and the French Space Agency Kness who operate the base to all our colleagues there. I'm Katie Haswell and I do hope that you've enjoyed our live coverage and that you'll join us again for our next launch, which as you heard there is in the early days of September. We'll see you then. Goodbye. Allumage et décollage.